principle you should, especially for a particular task. Like if you are, for example, wanting the LLM to do a certain thing, let's say generate quality words, you should basically be able to understand how much how much a hundred thousand token would improve, or maybe a million token. Yeah. So, but that the the way of thinking is yeah correct. Okay. So then, um, maybe just let's see because we have discussed already in the previous one and now more. So who has gone through the challenge document and who has understood what, and who can help us understand, um, explain. And I must say one thing, a group work is be making some people really, it's like in a queue. You, know, you are in a queue for a global level job and you are not participating. It's as if, you know, you are just not reaching there, right? So really, if you just think you could, this is not learning. If you just understand it and you are happy, uh, you really are failing for like basically the exact opposite of what we have in mind is that somebody understands and that they are happy. It is nothing got to do with understanding something and happiness. It's about really showing them off and getting a job out of it, right? And and I think it's a lot of people seem to be comfortable in their space. And in principle, the, 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 it should be just that everyone wants to speak because they want to ask, they want to be shown, they want to be seen, and they want to be able to actually ask, you know, become fast. And, you know, the, the more you ask, the more questions come to your mind. The more you don't ask, of course, no question will come to your mind. And that's always the difference why people like to hire people who ask, because those people, they already ask, therefore they have question in their head. And that means they can answer many things so it's really just don't get comfortable and this three months is not your comfort zone it is as if like you are going to the desert you're going to the forest you're going to you know um the space and if you really feel you are owners something is wrong you're not on your comfortable earth uh, or place your area it's the three months is dedicated to the most uncomfortable place you can be um, emotionally. So without, of course, being sad, but I think, yeah, it's like for those of you who are not really aiming, who are coming just um, to really just only listen, something you haven't understood really fundamentally. Um, so maybe ask yourself. Okay, with that, I think this just these warnings are there just because sometimes it's very easy to forget. Um, that you think like you're learning and it's all good. And I think that's that's exactly not the case. Um, okay, so who can tell us? Because just we, I know that we really stayed so long. I'm going to be very short. So let's make it faster. Who understood or what are questions? Maybe just let's ask this time questions. What have you not understood when you read? A bugger. Uh, okay. Uh, I didn't go through the documents that much, but what I have understood first of all was to fine tune our data so that uh, Afrotech could get uh, customer engagement, customer satisfaction on their own language or the language of choosing. So. Uh, we would be able to learn fine tuning in the use of open source LLMs, I guess. So we need to prepare the data. We'll be learning about how we could uh, process, prepare our data for fine tuning with uh, an LLM and probably use different tools to achieve that. And I think we'll would be needing much deeper understanding on how LLMs work, uh, and also the use of the relevance of GPUs, I guess. So maybe would be, from what I'm thinking, I think we'd be working on the 
previous yep. uh, given uh, resource on AWS, I guess. So I'll give my questions. Awesome. Yeah. So they, we will we will change them. So we'll keep the 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 data the storage, but you will have access to GPU uh, as a group, and unless it's requested, um, I think that the tutor team would know how to rearrange if it needs to be in terms of grouping but there will be a, a gpu per group and um so yeah so the size would be similar or maybe slightly reduced just because the gpu costs a lot for the same size um but yeah there will be a gpu and you would be hopefully understanding the data so this week you will be much more focused on um actual fine tuning and i think you are right a lot more of it is understanding open source you know even if we really use a lot more gpts open ai or gemini or anthropic the most important part is that when you build something very key you'll almost always go down to training your own fine-tuning your own model uh, mostly for the sake of also just that you don't need that much accuracy for many for many things you want just actually cheaper and um more cost effective and more that you can run without increasing um, the cost, right? So you can experiment at least. So for those things you really need, and so knowing how to fine tune, we know how also the LLM uh, model works and what what subsets of technologies are there in terms of fine tuning, in terms of pre-training, and in terms of also like testing, validating. This will really then, even if you don't fine tune in your normal job, you'd probably know to explain or expect how to write even a good prompt uh, as you go on, because then you know what data and you know all all sort of things. So <clears throat> it's like opening, like it's like a car. Sometimes, of course, you are a mechanic, so you are not just a driver. But as a mechanic, you might not need to know how really the engine. I don't know, like the the the, the physics of the engine or the chemistry of the engine, but knowing the chemistry of the engine can really help you understand a much 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 more understanding right in terms of by looking at the the small part of the thing the smell you would be able to know right so it, it's it is that level so you so almost always people with fine tuning they probably would 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 benefit so yes this week you will learn the different components of llm and go through end-to-end -end thinking especially focused on the data and improving the LLM, the open source Lama 3 in this case and others um, for how good they are first, you will be able to evaluate. And second, you will be able to just can you increase them based on the data that you have. So that's the, the main part of the this week. Okay, any question? Any your your question can be like explain please just highlight that part of the challenge document because i'm not gonna open the challenge document unless someone asks me so Dereji. okay can you hear me yes okay so yeah <clears throat> this week, uh, basically as you said so we are going to see fine tune uh lab model or just uh, llama model llama 2 or llama 3 so basically we are going to just uh use some it's yes the task is just related to text generation as i understand so yeah the fine tune is just related to african language amharic and swali so that's the other and uh yeah in terms of uh in terms of the model, so we are going to learn just uh, how large model uh, is stored on hugging face, and uh, then when we need to just uh, uh, when we need to just ask some questions, so we are going to directly use hugging face, and so that's what I'm understanding. And in terms of uh, my question is, yeah, I see. Uh, just some model uh that is on hugging face but it is only just uh the model uh it's not it has no explanation but uh it said 
that just it is fine to actually but so for example when we when we see uh, lama 2 so there is a format right formats of uh, uh yeah. so for example if you wanted to just fine tune some data set there is a row and uh under row yeah. there is the maybe question and the answer so i think i have i, I think and i i get your point and it's correct yeah. and last time i think there was gonna be probably if not this afternoon really uh, a detail special at least on how for lama to this the gary logistic which is one of the good fine-tuned model um there's gonna be from a tutor's team there's gonna be a going through because you, we don't want you to struggle on that so it's slightly complex how to set up and how to make it work so yes that's a good question and there will be a goal like they will give you a at least some document that explains exactly how how you should do it okay so great maybe and maybe th that includes what is written here as well but um hopefully hopefully you should you know whatever is just written here like the to use the gary logistic model so it tells you like this this part is one but i hope that everybody by tomorrow is able to run things um these ones um yeah okay so uh, continue Dereje. any yeah so so maybe tomorrow we uh yes i said we are going to get some details of uh this data sets just because i'm worrying because uh we already uh just uh, extract data set from uh, just articles that uh for example in for our for our group we have only title and the content is but in terms of uh maybe the format of this llama too maybe if the format is just change it so how we're gonna to how we're going you, you will you will be preparing the format it's simple and just follow how others prepared and just prepare it on that because these are just like very <clears throat> very clear there's going to be like if you read just how like the, the data formats are so there are for different reasons they do for different purposes Dif so for example if you are training a chat model that's different data model versus if you are text generation right so if you so things like that so but i think again um the tutors team will there be a tutorial on that um is when i mean the question is when actually like um uh, sorry it's tutorial on what on the just data data formats is um more like how that some people have prepared maybe we can ask from the previous batch um who can help us just how they prepared it's like their their data I mean, it should be simple I think you, you would figure it out yourself, Dereje, but just in case that's not the case, we would we would be able to organize. Okay, thank you. Okay. Japes? Okay. Uh, so just general question kind of thing. One is that we are, we are going to train a, a, a model on our maybe local language like Amharic as I previously mentioned. So uh, my question is one, I had, we ha I had a database, a lot of data on uh, like, a, for example, a PDF, but uh, I'm struggling with uh, converting it to, you know, uh, words that could be used, if you know what I mean. I, I have scanned PDFs. We have a lot of data on that, books for Amharic, but it's very hard to convert it to words so that uh, it could be used. Do you have a suggestion on that, maybe, so that we could have a, a lot of data in Hamai? Uh, I think it's 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 again, you know, it's a combination of two things. One is resource. You know, it's like of course you could you could do OCR on it, um, and there, it has its own quality issue, but probably it's better 
like um but then that would also cost a lot so i think that's why a lot of a lot of this is just a, a huge you know we're trying to do something 100 million dollar or maybe like a 100,000 dollar project for like 100 dollar right so in a way a lot of the thing that we're going to be using is something that that is available right away or that we can easily automate it so unless there are tools that you can if you just now use for example ocr from google it would cost you because the api would be a lot if you are using other ocr maybe their amharic might not be good right so it's uh yeah it's it is not easy to to be poor you know that's the the, the only way i can say but find a try on some element and if it works maybe you gain a lot but i cannot really give you um, an easy answer for that yeah. so mostly then search for already like data that you can actually using code you can analyze what we have is yeah that that doesn't require that much resource but in principle at least knowing that already can tell you okay if i have ocr i can increase my data by this amount you could say that by just roughly estimating so again you could build your mindset okay you know how much do i need to automate such that i can convert all of them and what are the tools out there maybe the commercial tools um, that that can work at okay quality so it's just at this form your your mindset on that yeah. okay get at you uh, I have tried it before for uh, the documents, but not for scan one. I'm not sure. So for when I come to my question, does, in, uh, does work? Does it work for Amharic? Well. Yeah, it works. It works. Okay. Okay. But I'm not sure for the, the one that scan one. Yeah. Uh, uh, when I come to my question, uh, in task four, it's, uh, there are listed uh, options, uh, starting with Gary Logistics, and uh, the process for Gary Logistics is uh, mentioned as uh, we all can see. Uh, what about the others? Are, they, are these uh, options for Gary Logistics model or uh, what? And I think it works, it works in general. There are two types of uh, models that you might find in um, maybe a couple, but one are just they don't have the full model like in the code so you have to you know piece it together so they give you the actual code which is the class in github and then they give you the model like the the parts in in hugging face so you can you should you you need to put together these things so that for them to work um and also the base model normally it's also like for example in facebook you have to go and actually get a license from that i mean you have to just request it means so this one works i'm sure I, i'm not sure how much uh, it has changed for lama uh, 3 but this should be a good guide and then you will figure it out yourself at, at least when you read and when you are trying and if not i think i would say don't really try to not spend too much time on that today and tomorrow you know everybody should be able to at least have a clearer understanding you know ask as many questions as possible so that you you have loaded the model and inferred so the, you do some inference first and then because once you know how to infer how the model just as it is is working then fine-tuning it becomes easier yeah okay Michael. Okay, thank you. I have two questions. The first one is: Is there any specific goal? Like, we are are we making chatbots or something? 
or is this general and the second one is uh, there is a concept called transfer learning in the, the in the interaction part like because we don't we can't train the large scale data for amharic or for other low resource language the best thing you can the best approach is transfer learning so if you can explain about that and when we when we refer fine tuning is that are we saying transfer learning or is that and uh, is that a different concept thank you yeah that's a good question to relate to what you already know transfer learning but the fine tuning is transfer learning like you are transferring your your learning from before which is the lama 2 when we say lama 2 lama 3 or any of the open source models we are we are saying they are learned they have understood some something and we are on top of them building um we're, we're using their knowledge and on top of that building so it's a type of transfer learning and just that it is it's that so um and then the goal your first question it's mentioned here and it's really about for a bigger goal is to use of course chatbots and all that but they want afrotech really wants to just actually be able to generate because for all of the sets of things it's a ability to generate coherent text uh, is key so it's about text generation um so improving the text generation part so that means normally the q a just one question one answer right in this case so later then once that is good then you go into more building chatbots rugs and and many so just what is written is just this one is the goal okay so so we are are we building on top of the so we are building on top of the english trained llm model no, right? no, so, no, none of the llms are just english only trained they are english dominated because all the models are trained in trillions of tokens which means they contain everything from the web mostly but they have highly of course represented english is highly represented but they still know lama too if you ask it in amharic it can reply in amharic too it's just not good and it could it knows also um, yoruba and swahili and others so it, it is it's just that the number of data is small uh, in their original training so you are trying to add more fine tune it such that it is much better of course that's the that's the goal the ambition is that is that so, clear yeah so in in simple terms we are just adding a, a cleaned and prepared data to the model right yeah, kind of yeah like i mean using its power it's already language power because language and many other semantics are already there because that requires a huge you know thing and then on top of that we are stre steering it to a space of the model where it's better in a, in, in this language because yeah it's like um, fine tuning really means just that like you are giving it a cream right such that it looks good for for the aspect that you want yes okay so thank you. it's really about that it's not a, it's uh, quality data means you can improve a lot already already llama is good for other things but for amharic it might not so or for you know like this other language and so you're trying to tweak it so that it gets better without training it yourself from scratch yes abraham okay thank you could you uh, give us a brief overview of the key components in the llm training and fine tuning the first question and the second question what is the criteria to choose those open source models uh, so that we can enhance them so i think let me start from the second the the the, sec, the, the good point is where we have asked you actually to do that you know, what are the good criteria um to choose one so i think this is literature review um
make a choice of open source LLM to use. The choice of model, including the size and the model, depends on the use case and computational resources available. Check the comprehensive list of open source access list on Agingface. You can use you know, these this ones and then estimate. Um, you should be able to exactly get an idea what what are the key components for, for your goal, in this case, text generation. As I said, um, the very few things are just, of course, resources and whether it is already good, able to make uh, a good inference already in the language of your interest. Okay, so that, that is, that are, and the components are written more or less here. It's like, you need to understand the key terms and the concepts, and you need to have a, a, a kind of an idea that the terminologies, once you understand, you then now know what it means a transformer. Within the transformer, you know, then a decoding only, encoder only, and encoding, decoding, transformers, and within transformers, embedding, positional embedding, things like that, you would need to understand. And then you need to understand transformer architecture. And then you would need to also understand embeddings and tokenization and positional embeddings. And the other one is, of course, just how to then pull, especially when you have parameter efficient fine tuning, LoRa for uh, memory uh, management or to decompose. So these things, these are the components. Okay. And I think that that already gives you exactly the, the needs that are there. Does that answer your question, Ram? Yeah, great. Yeah, so I think the components are mentioned yes, there. Yeah, yeah rough, roughly, and just you will fill out the details. So that's why the first part is really review. Okay, any really outstanding question that people really Okay, you know, you can also ask, like I sometimes give you a license to ask, I don't understand. Just and tell me in this manner, like with respect to the last week's project, or tell me with respect to X or Y. You have a license to ask also like that. The most important part is to not leave this space without having a an idea. So yeah, Michael. Yeah, okay. Um, I was about to ask that. So l last week we finished, uh, we prepared the data, but we didn't uh, uh, data. We didn't do da the data annotation part. So in, the, in this case, what is the purpose of the data annotation? Or if, so if we didn't do that, so should we do it in this project? The first question. Yes, you will do it. So there is, um, because you're going to use super supervised fine tuning um, and for that you would need a uh, data labeled now how you label a data is a very art right so you could just label it in such a way that it's as a question and answer so that's data preparation earlier also i think it was asked so if you want it to be question and answer you need to show it what question and answer looks like Right, so you have to ask some question and you have to provide that answer. Or unsupervised fine tuning would be that you would just basically the next word prediction, right? So you basically have to provide that, or maybe other things, maybe identify dates and this and that. The most important part is the more training sets you can create from one data, a lot of training sets by just labeling, like you know, by labeling it differently. Right, sometimes as it's the same as you know uh, teaching a kids or in a class in a school. You know, from the same chapter, from the same thing, it can be multiple question answer. It can be uh, uh, fill in the blank. It can be summarize. It can be this and that. It's exactly you're teaching the LLM in that sense. So the and the supervised fine tuning will be that. So yes, you will do. A form of fine tuning, like a form of um, um, labeling here, so that it fits. So, question and answer is one very easy way. Uh, but if it is easier for you to summarize, you can do summarization as well. 
So that means you say like, here is the content of an article and here is the, the summary of it. So that's now labeled, like the summary means the label. And the other one is that here is a, a document and here is a question and here is the answer. That's called Q&A. Or you can have, you know, fill in the blank or multiple choice or this or that, you know? Do you get it? Is that clear? Yes, but uh, do we use this manually or uh, like uh, when we try I think to find... Normally, it's, it's, if you find already labeled data, that's great. But as there you can is see, no label data in Amharic, I think. Yeah, for Amharic so language. normally you could, you could have, of course, if we have collected students' books and students' um, uh, notebooks, you know, those who just like that's one easy way the, the reason why you were building yesterday was to try to source those kind of data right if you ask like okay you know how did how how many you know people can contribute their assignment submissions at, at least um they can if, if it, they have it and digitally and you can use them like okay you know here was the chapter and here was you know the first question sets here's the question and his answer or maybe just some job interviews and questions um and many multiple question answers in medical or you know or maybe just the one for traffic departments or this and that so it's about collecting so there are many tests that are given um, and it's about getting them normally if not then you have to label some things by hand and we we're gonna probably share also from last from the previous year uh, batch people who have collected we will share those data as well okay. but Thank it's hard work yeah yeah okay my next question in the task the task one yeah we we are supposed to know about hugging face ecosystem for further yeah. training and fine tuning and in the in the task two we will load the llm and use it for inference but in the task two section five there is a concept with quant quantization without model and with model what is the difference and what's quantization means yeah so quantization is part of in this one when you learn the like fine tuning and an llm you will learn what is this uh, quantization is uh, they are this parameter efficient fine tuning part of it is it's trying to load the model um in lower bytes you know like instead of loading it into full uh, byte eight bits and that you would you would kind of actually reduce it to four bits and and more and it's about loading a model such that it's very small and lora is just you you then decomposing using matrix linear algebra and matrices to represent uh, such that updates really you only update a small part of them the matrix and without therefore you know so that so these are just combinations things that you would learn uh, that makes fine tuning easy or be doable in one gpu because otherwise you would have to load in multiple gpus and stuff like that so it's it's that one so quantization is that that part loading the model at lower bytes yeah okay Japes. okay so my, my question is that uh, the the llama is a uh, i think a model that meta produced and then I think uh, there is there are other models who are fine tuned fine tuned the llama model in hugging face. So yeah. so are we so we are using the other models from that hugging face and um, uh, we 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 start yeah. So one is Gari Gari fine tuned llama, and you will you will understand and you'll try to also fine tune on top of that, adding more data to it. So updating the, so the, they give the, if they give you if without so when you when you learn LoRa, a little bit about that you will it gets clearer. So LoRa basically decomposes the model into two parts, 
one is the base model and the other one is just the one that you are updating. Now, if a, if a, a person or the organization that fine-tuned gave you the decomposed version, then you can continue on top of it. So using their data as well as your data. So but that is Amharic model? It's an Amharic model, yeah. So they are probably the best last time that we checked. There might be others maybe now, but I think that they were the best. And they have also done uh, more. And I'm and what I am asking is that every group that is working also for Swahili and Yoruba, then you should also look what are the good models within that. I think there are references here, but yeah. So what are the good models and how can you learn? And it's about really learning from them as well what is a good so it's really getting it clear so this week if you if you have clarity what is really the components and and which set and what you know what is the token how do you you know how does a token influence and if i am going to be fine-tuning next like i have a now bigger resource and i have a clarity you know you must really defend that concept like that that means it's clear to you okay how this mechanics a lot of concepts it's not about perfection but it's about really clarity and getting something super super clear right so okay like it involves a lot of things it involves the model it involves the the code it involves the data it involves the architecture so and then it involves also some on top of it techniques and strategies to do it well to fit the gpu and then the gpu so you, it, all of them must be clear how you know they're aligned. So in your head, then when you have to explain to your basically friends, not just like you have done or this, that, you know, as if because they don't understand it, they, they can't ask you, but it's like you can really make them understand. I mean, you might not have done much, but you really have understood and you can explain it to anyone. And now if I if someone gives you an okay, I have this in in a, I don't know, in English. I want you to fine tune for this, then you'll be like, yeah, yeah, of course. You know, the data is not a problem there. I will do that. You know, so aim for that because it's a complex in one week, it's a lot, but aim for clarity and aim for really making sense at the end. Okay. So that you can really say sentences that make sense. Um, okay, Japes. Okay, so it's like a general uh, question for you know, since I started the Thin Academy, I will, I am struggling with the, the idea, the idea that I want to understand really what's going behind uh, Very uh, the concepts. But I, I also had to, uh, you know, submit uh, finally, yeah. and, and I'm struggling to understand both the concepts because the concepts are very interesting, and we can go in so many levels and understand the base. But the base of it, but if I uh, took so many time on understanding it, maybe I'm not gonna have yeah, you exactly. Uh, so the uh, whole point, this is not really understanding. This is about learning the language. It's like you know, it's like if you have tried to learn another language, it, it is you won't you won't be fluent in that language. You won't even understand many things in that language. You are trying, you're just saying it again and again and again, right? So Duolingo, it's like they make you say things again and again, whether you agree or not. It's very similar. In a way, you have to have the language, the technology, the things, it should fit in your head, not as an understanding, but at least how they, you know, how they flow. So you can then make, you know, a, a say, Lama without making contradictory things, right? You know, you may not understand how to do it, but you have a clarity. So I'm not wanting a very detailed understanding, I, at least to make sense, right? To when you talk to an interviewer that you can ask question. And I actually, the good questions, if you ask, then that means you understand it. And a lot more of the problem is that people don't ask. And when they don't ask, they really can't pass interviews. Nobody, I mean, I, I know this because I've worked on it and I know how you don't know it by the amount of questions you don't ask. Now, I can appreciate if you really are asking 
if you if your way of asking question is will help you understand if you don't ask then i know you it doesn't help you therefore i will not hire you i mean i'm not really joking i will not hire anyone who doesn't ask questions just simply as a very simple no one nobody hires a person at the end of the interview they say okay what what kind of questions do you have for us and they say i don't have question that means you don't think therefore if you don't think why do i hire you right so in a way to but to ask even to generate question you have to think actively to think actively you have to have a ways to understand something right or a general way or a specific way a general way means okay here is a general thing i don't understand so how can what is my way of understanding and then you ask so is it like that or is it like this is it you know so you're kind of probing it or maybe you know it but you you haven't understood something and you try to go detail on that and it is to help you for that and then really demonstrate that you have also not only just ideas because theoretical things just don't don't sink but you have also followed with that practically seen it practically loaded the model practically you know loaded the data try to modify and so you can combine both that you have a hands-on experience that means you have seen the model loaded you have seen the model inferred and you have seen the model saved and you have seen the model transferred and pushed as well as also that you have these things clear right so it's not really deep understanding it's not a class it's about a job and once you get a good job they ask you these questions in for the next three four years so that you will understand it so good but if you don't have that chance it doesn't matter how much you understand now right so it's really about to get there so that you can you have opportunity to work more on it right it, we, and we know you, you in the next three months if you more optimize to understand it's better than if you're just trying to optimize to understand it it's optimized such that you ask more questions and get and discuss such that you can say something that that is interesting you can ask questions and you have practiced something you have seen it practically and with that you will get a job and within the job you will do a lot more interesting and complex things and there you know you can master it does that make sense yes okay. thank you great hillary yeah so my, my question is uh looking at task one there's part of llm landscape and uh, there are three categories for architecture encoder 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 decoder yeah and decoder only like uh what are what are what are those i i didn't get much time to look at all the links uh, no, but that's good how is that helping us in the fine tuning yeah so that's good i think this is this is the type of question now you get into the details so that you know like i think this general specific I, I i like the questions people are asking so so this encoder decoder is basically if you have heard bert bert is encoder only and if you have heard of course you have heard opening igpt that's decoder only and they are just much more related by how they link they are both transformer models but one is really just takes the the original transformer has both components so it encodes something and then um that encoded the decoder then predicts them while the decoder only just really doesn't do any it doesn't deal anything with encoder it just takes this one and then um it's basically so keeps the predicting one. the next word yeah. so that's what decoder only is decoder only means these large language models that really are are the gpt type architectures that are much more about predicting the next word encoders are much more they have certain other specifics that that are so basically BERT and then encoder decoder is another type Does that does that give you yeah, idea? That, yeah, that gives me an idea. Um, okay. Yeah. So my my other question is like uh, the uh, the part of positional embedding. 
Um, yeah. What is, uh, yeah, yeah it's, what a, it's again it's again one of the component it is bec when you go away from rec neural uh, recurrent neural networks which actually recur the position of words where they are now with llms or you know, with transformers you don't have the positions because it does in parallel and for that to recur the position of a word or a token with respect to it is sentence or with respect to its document then the position in imbe positional embedding is that so actual the embedding contains exactly these elements so it gets again clearer as you read so it's it's a much more of how transformers work like because transformers get away from recurrent neural networks which means which had a, a, an advantage in recording the position because they come sequentially so they know like recurrent neural networks had that but transformers don't therefore they have to have something else which is called positional embedding yeah is that that, that is yeah that is good okay daisy uh, my question is um you mentioned that um, this LLM models already understand African languages. So how would we know that our fine tuning actually made a difference? Yes, that's a good question. And that's exactly what you're gonna do. First, you're gonna test them first before you do anything. You're gonna benchmark them, right? So I think, um, so set up, not set up your environment, make a choice, load an open, then infer, use the loaded in to generate outputs. Make sure to test multiple inference scenarios um, and, and that. And then later you will compare for the same things, have they improved? So exactly, because some of them really are bad when they come, some of them are good. So I think here it's really, there is there at some point there there should be um so yeah there should be some place um where it's really all about exactly measuring how much how good you have done Uh, Hillary, or is it just there should be yeah. somewhere? Yeah. So um, no, I mean, I mean, is that a, a different question? Yeah, yeah. So, but but Daisy, it's just basically, I think one of the tasks is to explore, um, to explore like exactly how they work, like uh, not how they work, how good they are so far, before you do anything, and then. And then later you will be able to think there must be a, somehow it's cut or somehow I had I remember differently. Um, so in principle, yes, review again. We try some examples on your machine and yeah. So just I think the easiest is exactly do it on Bose, um, even. Chat GPT and others try them, how good they are, so that you can compare later. Yeah, does that does that make sense? Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hilary. Yeah. So uh, now, yeah, so I'm seeing task task two mentions uh, GPU, and there's other parts for, about GPU size, and uh, I uh, after checking. The, whether the AWS instance have GPU, so yeah, we do, we don't have a GPU now, but we will yes. give you. Just we will update them. Okay. Thank yeah. You. So you'll have a GPU. Some again, you. Uh, I will list it exactly, the machine type here, um, so that yeah, you will know what GPU you have. But also you can check the NVIDIA. So it's going to be NVIDIA. It's going to be. I don't know if it's T4 or, or it's going to have, I think last time is at 16 gigabyte, 24 gigabyte RAM, 
uh, would have. Right. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's so going to be good right. enough for for fine tuning. Lama. Yeah. So is, we do we is it the same that you update or a different instance? So it's going to be the same instance. I mean, I'm going to update it. Wonderful. I hope everyone is excited. Again, really is the question that will help you. And so ask, discuss within among yourselves, make sure to crack it, to fit your, you know, I always feel this thing is like this tentacles, you know, like uh, this idea as you start is like with lots of tentacles that doesn't fit. It's about, you know, packing it such that it fits in your head. It's not about really anything, it's fitting it in your head. And so later, as you build and build and build, it gets better and better. And you can talk to your, uh, you know, employer and everyone because it fits in your head. You can ask the good questions, you know. So that's the question. So really fit it in your head. Okay. Uh, Durhaman? Uh, sorry, Abibal. Uh, yeah. Very firstly, was. Go on. Yeah. Uh, I was around me. Your internet is breaking, Abdrahman. So I put my question on the chat box. Uh, how can I evaluate? Um... My model uh, at the end or how I can. I, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you because it was breaking. Can no, you repeat? It's... Okay, you, you can check the chat box, please. Okay. Okay. Yeah, how to evaluate our model? I mean, how to know that Anthony added a value to the model performance? Yes, I think that was similar to what I answered to Daisy. Uh, it is first you compare the base model, how its performance, how it performs to your questions, to your test data or evaluation data. And then after training, after fine tuning, you will then check again if it improved over that. So for example, you decompose your data, your fine tuned, your supervised fine, you know, data, label data into training, va validation, and tests. And then using that validation data, you check you know how how you how the base model lama two or lama three how they they do and then after fine tuning you do the same and then you see if it is improved that's an easy way to to check so again uh Ab Abu Bakr, we're gonna use lama three but like for five for gary for example i'm not sure if they have lama three that's why we we talk about lama lama two some models already also some people um like for swahili and yoruba they might be also having only lama 2 so for that reason it's that confirmation but lama 3 we would want to test lama 3. wonderful i hope again everyone is excited and you are gonna give your best um and you're gonna build on top of the data that you had already so that, that was the reason why we prepared you, just so that you understand the data, because ultimately it's the data, the model, you know, these bigger companies, Facebook, Apple, Google, Amazon, they're all releasing open sources here and there. So models, we are not going to, the base model, but the data really helps. Like, and therefore, and we, you are going to be, there is a chance that you're going to be the leader in your language probably created probably the first you know maybe not the the very best but something that's highly improved that somebody can use it over right you will have your hugging face account some people will check out right so it's a chance to show off to learn and to really ensure that you fit this this thing um in your head and really think of it as really lots of tentacles and you cannot fit it alone you have to work together to ask lots of questions and brainstorm and, and and bring it find the strategy fit it in your head 
and then in your presentation next week i hope to look to see people talking in a you know with just this vocabulary at least corrected you know vocabulary is rightly used and and so yeah great yeah i think data is definitely you are going to be adding uh, so part of the work almost always is about improving the more the data quality as well as the data size and it's a, and the data label so you're still going to be working on the data yeah michael yeah okay so so the final question uh, i think there was time con constraint for all of us because we are preparing for presenting the last weeks uh, yeah. up to like uh, uh, 11 p.m so if needed can can we have another session after we we watch the documentation and the research yes absolutely so on wednesday coming? we'll hope to i hope to have a quick q a or tomorrow as well maybe um so because this is something we learn together yes great thanks thanks everyone and then academy team we can stop the recording